Um, so mine's, you kind of, Joe kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, but I'm programming for you know, athletes, field sport athletes, strength athletes. You know, it's always not easy, but straightforward. It's, you know, I know what I'm doing. And then when I go to program for myself, I kind of overthink. And I kind of know what part of the answer might be. Um, but I overthink and I kind of take, you know, I think about all the things I know and I try to plug it all in and I kind of go down this rabbit hole of like, you know, should I add this? Do I need this? Blah, 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 blah. So you ever find yourselves in that bias and that kind of rabbit hole of like programming for yourself and that introspective look at what you need to do, what yeah. you should be doing, and yeah. kind of get around that. I try to be as objective as I can be when I'm programming for myself. And it's helpful, like right now, I'm uh, prepping for a strongman competition in December, which made programming a lot easier because I have these five events I need to get better at. And I would just kind of look at it as if I was one of my own clients, what would I need to do to get better? Um, so, so that's helpful for me. Um, but yeah, if you have like a power team meet coming up or even just goals, I want to squat, bench, deadlift this. Um, try to be as objective as you can. And I would say that pre-planning for three, four, five, six weeks at a time and writing it out is better than kind of winging it from day to day and saying, today's my squat day, on the drive over, what am I going to do? Um, actually writing out, I'll write out four weeks of what I'm going to do next. And then do that. Yeah. So. I mean, look at his arms. I think what you're doing is, it's working. <laughs> Just keep it up, man. It's great. I think all of us at some point have had coaches, or I, we still kind of do. So, you know, you can look at us or wherever we're at. But like I said, I call him when I need help with programming. Uh, it takes my mind completely out of it. And that way I just do what's on the paper. I could maybe even write the same thing he's going to say, but just as like he wrote it, I'm doing it. That's how I operate. In the off season, I have the general idea, like I said, of what to do. So I follow that until I need help with anything specific. Um, could be the same with nutrition, whatever. But I think just having someone else to either bounce ideas off of or kind of give you some feedback is always – like I don't think even as a coach, it's like not you're not too cool – to like have a coach or have someone to help you out along the way. Um, and if anything, I've learned a ton. Um, so it's helped me in that aspect. Uh, and it's, it's helped me progress a lot further than I would have if I was on my own. Um, how often should you PR and like, Every damn PR? day. And should you PR like a week or two before? Hmm. I don't think there's an answer as to how often you should PR. <clears throat> I will say that the longer you lift, the less often it happens. Um, but as far as before a meet, um, I don't think you necessarily should, should strive to PR before that meet. It's nice if you do. Um, but I would kind of save that for the platform. Uh, but I do, with all my clients, use um, RPE, which is kind of not really prescribing a specific number, but more of an effort. Um, so if I say, hey, work up to a heavy single today, uh, but maybe, you know, you could probably do another, another rep. Um, and if that happens to be a PR, awesome. If not, no big deal. Yeah. I'll add knowing Kevin Moore as a member, should you be doing, always trying to hit a PR? No. Like a single all the time? No. A PR, no. All right. Okay. Yeah. So like volume is good. And yeah, saving some in the tank goes a long way. Yeah, And you can even, if you really do love PRs, uh, we all do, but if you're really trying to do it, you can do it in either way. Like, hey, you know, my best, uh, my best set of three reps is 225. Um, and you end up doing 225 today for three reps, and you say, I'm going to do it for a second set, right? That's a, you know, you did it for two sets of three. In a way, that's better than you did last time. Um, so there are other ways. It's not always the absolute one rep max every day. Or conjugate, you're hitting PRs every single time because you've never done the movement before. <laughs> Something different every yeah, single every time. single time. Down, what is this movement? I don't know. <laughs> uh, advantages and what indoor disadvantages for using the belt for accessories, like if you're deadlifting with a uh, belt and then you're going to do block pulls, why would you not suggest using a belt for a block pull? Good question. Great question. I have an answer. Yeah, I, uh, so I think it depends upon the lifter. One of the things that I noticed, and I actually was a late user of a belt, just because the gyms I was lifting at didn't have belts and so forth. 
I think it just depends upon uh, the technique, the concept of bracing is the only thing that I'd be cautious of if someone uses a belt all the time, where I've noticed on occasion uh, for some people when they squat or when they deadlift because they'll crank the shit out of their belt and they, they just kind of forget them that cue, right? And they use it so often, um, the concept of bracing first, pull on the belt and then brace and lift. Or they, I've seen it also too, where they crank it so much that they actually have either, like just their form gets out of whack where the belt's pulling them into another position as opposed to, you know, the belt's assisting you. It's increasing intra-abdominal pressure. So if you have that under lock and your form's already good, I actually don't think it's a terrible idea to use a belt often. And that was your question, right? Like, is, is it like a bad thing to right. be using in your accessory movements? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as opposed to just the main movement. So I, I would just make sure that not that your technique looks the same without a belt, but you know what you're doing bracing wise before you slap a belt on. So I, the, the, when I would suggest not wearing a belt, I'm doing that so that I can uh, artificially decrease the weight. Yeah, that's exactly it. Artificially reduce the weight and make the, make the, take, the ball, take the weight off the bar. So doing accessory movements, it doesn't always need to be heavier, mm -hmm. right? So hey, you just did deadlifts, I'm gonna have you do rack pulls from the knee with a belt, with straps, right? So let's say uh, if I wanted Joey squatting twice a week, and one day he worked up to 575 for five reps. And I was like, you're gonna squat again later this week, but I don't want you doing 575 for five reps again. So I'm gonna have you do a three count pause squat. I'm gonna have you do a high bar squat because it's less weight. And I'm gonna have you go beltless, right? So it's still a hard training session, but the absolute weight on the bar is less. So that's, where, that's how, how and why I say uh, when when you shouldn't use a belt. Right. You already changed those two aspects by putting the high bar and yeah. Ball. So I'm each one of those uh, variables that I change is just dropping weight on the bar. So I could say you're doing squats, working up to whatever top set of six. I'll have you do that later on, top set of six with no belt. Gotcha. But that's only going to take a little bit of weight off. So if I want a little more, I'll say hey, it's going to be a front squat. A little more, it's going to be a pause front squat, gotcha. right? So that's you know why I uh, do and do not use a belt. I agree with him. Yeah. <laughs> just a way to manage the, uh, the fatigue, like long term. You know, you can see how you're trending. Or, like, like I said, it's more about, like a, say, like a weekly RPE or a session RPE. So, if you have, you don't want all your sessions to be, uh, you know, say, like eights or nines. Mm -hmm. So, just maybe on the first day, it's around an eight. And then later in the week, you want it to be around a six. So, we'll throw in things like variations without a belt, with a pause, whatever, to any movement to help lower that, to just manage the overall, like, you know, spectrum of fatigue so that we're getting the strength adaptation and getting stronger long-term. But with that, it really doesn't matter if you decide, hey, I like wearing my belt every time I go to the gym. Okay. That's fine. Too. It's a good fashion statement. Yeah, <laughs> wear it all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, mine's not really lifting related, but as far as YouTubers, us in the room, I, I guess you guys are kind of celebrities in our eyes. You all have a lot of subscribers. So I'm curious, outside of the gym, do you guys get recognized a lot in public? <laughs> Funny you should ask that. Only this guy here. We, uh, Joey picked us up from uh, the airport, and we're just chilling. We're at some cheesesteak place. <laughs> And uh, we notice the story that is so someone, good, though. Uh, it is so good. That someone, we're just minding our own business, and we notice two individuals approaching, kind of behind us, and Joey's thinking to himself, like, I'm like, dude, they want money. Like, yeah. like for real. Like, it's I'm a just safe like, assumption. Yeah, it's where they want a cheesesteak. Like, that's right. really what I thought. Right. And uh, she's shaking, and she said, <laughs> are you Alan Thrall? <laughs> and uh, Alan, it was weird, he had his sunglasses on and he just didn't respond to her. So Joey had it and said, yeah man, that's, that's Alan. <laughs> and then uh, she's like, mind if I get a photo? And again, no response. So we, we smoothed it out, but uh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, Alan, Alan, was to, Alan was totally cool. Um, yeah, I, I would say, I, I guess it, it happens and uh, the most important thing is to make sure you check yourself to think that your shit don't stink. Where you start kind of, that, that guruism, right? Where you start believing that, oh, I have a following, therefore whatever I say, I'm just gonna start putting shit out. And the worst part I'd say, to be wary of if you ever get in the social media game, is that concept that once you establish yourself as the guru, where whatever I say, I'm shitting gold here. Like I'm just dropping nuggets. Where knowledge is domain specific and kind of what Alan said in a previous video, 
uh, I think that we recorded yesterday, the idea it's okay to say that you don't know and not always trying to offer the answers or always appear like you're the person in authority, right? Uh, so just the idea that that comes and with that adulation and with some of that attention, it kind of feeds that ego and that validation. And so sometimes you start thinking to yourself, yeah, man, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And that's when you start noticing, you know, coaches uh, that never have coached weightlifters saying that you should low bar squat as a means of increasing, you know, your weightlifting performance. Um, I, typically my day is home, gym, home, gym, back and forth. So I, it's not like an everyday occurrence. Uh, but, but yeah, it's uh, oftentimes people will, uh, from a distance, I'll hear, get on, get someone trying to yell at me. And, and I'll just chuckle. I won't even look around for it. Um, but uh, I think that it's more of the, the hair and the beard that's obvious. And there are people who come up to me or who stare at me and they'll say, I feel like I recognize you. So they're not even subscribers. Like, I feel like I recognize you. I've seen you before. And I'll just be like, I don't know. Man. Um, so maybe they just saw, you know, in passing a uh, YouTube video or something. But it's definitely the hair and the beard that sticks. Yeah. You know, That's how my wife is. Alan Thrall's got the big beard. Jimmy has got short beard. But they've got long hair. Oh, okay. I think it was uh, like two days ago, Coach Tyner were at Costco and picking up stuff for the barbecue. And a guy just yelled, Coach Joe. And I was just like, <laughs> And it was a Costco employee. But the, the cool part is, is um, honestly, we all got in this to help as many people as possible. And, and you're literally looking at two of the most genuine people. Like, honestly, like, and there's stuff that goes on behind the scenes with YouTube that you guys don't even know and you shouldn't know. Um, but they're exactly how they are. And they haven't let the, uh, <laughs> um, you know, the fame or whatever go to their heads. And that's why, you know, I say who we associate with are, are, are all like that. Uh, but the cool part was, is that guy, I ended up talking to him, ended up coming to the barbecue. Yeah. Yeah. So funny. that was cool to me because he not only just, we had a conversation, but we got him into the bar. Like, I got chills, like the community, like that's what it was about. You guys talk about that. So to me, I was like, that's fucking cool. You know what I mean? And then he had that really awesome experience. And what if he never, like he would have never got to meet these guys, never got to meet any of you or ever had that experience. Um, so I find it fascinating how stuff like that uh, ends up happening. And it's kind of cool if we can just keep growing you know, our overall, uh, you know, big tribe of just fitness and strength training. And that's why we got into it. So I, I find it's really cool when uh, people come up and I always try to just talk to people. So I train for and compete in bodybuilding, but I think strongman is a heck of a lot of fun. So in the off season, I kind of want to compete in strongman, but you know, if you go and try to just be a bro and ego everything and you walk into a strongman contest without doing anything, kind of likely to hurt yourself. So how can I, prepare for that without compromising my bodybuilding training? I, uh, I kind of disagree. I don't think that you need to be really prepared for a strongman competition. Uh, in a way, it's kind of like a fun circus sideshow. Uh, and when I first got into, first got into strongman, I didn't have uh, access to internet. Um, it was just like a flyer, sign up for the strongman competition. And a lot of the events on it, I had no idea. There was a, uh, an axle bar deadlift, and I'm thinking like, or we're gonna be lifting like a real truck axle or something. Um, there was a uh, Husafel stone. I didn't know what the hell that was. So there were a lot of, but it, that was exciting to me. Like, I wanna go try this stuff. Um, so I don't think that you have to be, uh, you know, I gotta come in there taking first place. You know what I mean? So you can, you can have fun, but um, it's a, uh, I would say start doing strongman now. That'd be the obvious answer to prepare yourself. If you can find access to strongman equipment, start there and then just practice some of it. But you don't need to be really prepared to do a strongman competition. You don't need to be really prepared to do powerlifting. Um, you probably need to be a little more prepared for a bodybuilding show, but uh, that's my opinion. I would say whatever it is that you want to get good at, you know, it's a tell story of focus on that. Everything else kind of is secondary. You know, like I like doing jujitsu. That is not my primary focus. So I don't set the expectations that I'm going to be a freaking animal when I go compete in jiu-jitsu. I literally would sign up on a weekend, like, just go and do it. Um, so I would just say, like, the mentality behind it is big. Like, just show up and have fun, like he said. Uh, focus on, like, your bodybuilding, it seems like it's what you're really serious and passionate about. So that should be on the, the top of the priority list. And then just try a straw man, see what happens. And we've all talked about this. It's cool if things change, too. Like, if you start getting into straw man, you're like, okay, like, my interest keeps growing and growing and growing. Well, Explore that. Like, how old are you? Uh, 17. Okay. So, 
Yeah, you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so jacked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you have a, a lot of potential to go do whatever you want. Don't think about it too much. <laughs> Uh, I should have said right off the bat, I'm not a bodybuilder, so I can't really give you bodybuilding advice. Check out uh, Eric Helms on social media. Uh, and I know he's been doing uh, strongman, not necessarily powerlifting, but he's been doing strongman competitions. I don't think that he's doing that in conjunction with bodybuilding, uh, but he would be a more credible source than, than me. All right, because he's bridged the gap before. Right, yeah. yeah. And I don't know, Omar, might, Omar knows him uh, better than I do, so he might. If you send him a message, He's that weirdo, he'll respond. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah.